Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Notando and I make videos on construction, lifestyle and travel. If you're new here, welcome. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for tuning back in. Please don't forget to like the video. So on today's video, we are going to talk about the two roles of quantity surveyors based in mining specifically. So how this video came about is that an old friend of mine reached out and asked me, have you ever spoken about what a QS does but in mining? And I think I've touched on it in an older video, but I've never really gone into the details of the two and put the two side by side. And by the two, I mean the client QS in mining and the contractor QS in mining. So that's what we'll be discussing in this video. So you'll know the role of a QS overall within the mine industry and what the two bring together within the mine. So yeah, let's get right on into it. The client QS in mining has the role of protecting the client's or the mine's financial interest, ensuring value for money, reviewing and approving contractors' claims, managing budgets, compensation events, forecasts, etc. They also need to prepare payment certificates after verifying the progress on site and they need to ensure compliance with the contract conditions such as NEC or FIDIC, depending on what contract it is. And they also advise project manager on the financial implications of any change that needs to happen on site. So when you think of the client side QS in mining, they are the gatekeeper, verifying that every rand is spent carefully. For an example, if a compensation event comes in, which is like a change event, which happens and it costs money, the contract to QS side sees the extra costs. The client asks, was it in the scope? Is it remeasurable? Their job is to validate or challenge any change or any additional costs that a project incurs. And then you have the contractor QS also working for the mine. Usually the contractor QS that works for the mine, they'll be working for maybe electrical work that's being done on the mine, steel work, if any steel work is being done on the mine, civil work that's being done on the mine, but they are part of now the contractor that has been within the mine doing work for a mine. Usually upgrades or refurbishments or new structures that will optimize what the mine is doing. So yeah, the contractor QS, their role is to maximize profitability, repair and substantiate claims for payment or any changes, um, track site progress and compile cost to complete reports, negotiate with the client QS to, re to recover actual costs because a lot of the times things never go according to plan and you need to explain what happened and why it's costing more money to the other side, which is the client QS. Um, they manage subcontractor accounts and procurement. So if anything needs to be ordered, they need to verify that, make sure that there's an allowable in the bill for it. Um, and when it comes to subcontractors, they need to make sure that the subcontractors are paid or properly appointed or vetting those subcontractors um, to do the right job for their project. If you think about it, when they start managing subcontractors, they become like the client to the subcontractor. But yeah, that's their role. And then they also forecast cash flow and they manage project finances. The mindset of the contractor QS on a mine is to be like a storyteller, translating the realities of all the changes on site into practical like information and justifiable claims where you have numbers, a graph, a verification, all of that needs to be verified by a contractor QS. For example, if there's a rain delay or design change occurs, the contractor QS quantifies the time and the cost impacts and then submits a CE or a claim to recover those costs. Usually they need to have all the backup that they have. How many people are on site? What are the clock in details? Did everybody, you know, yeah, things like that. So they need to make sure that when things, when there's a change on site or there's an event that happens on site that isn't part of what the contract was, they need to be sure that they have their stories in check in place, that their backup matches the story and, and that it's justifiable and you can interpret it in a monetary or quantitative way to the client QS in order for you to get compensated for that. Yeah, those are the two differences. One is protecting the money, one is making and justifying the money that might be outside of the contractual scope while managing progress, changes and stuff on site 
while the client QS just makes sure that everything that's happening is being justified and the, the client QS will always challenge the contractor QS on the validity of the claims, especially when it comes to things that are outside of the scope of works, which were on originally agreed between the two parties. So where they meet and sometimes clash, clients and contractor QS usually get along if everything is going smoothly and perfectly and according to the contract, but that rarely happens. So they'll always clash because of the changes or the variations that are happening on site. So if there's a site shutdown, I'm gonna be like, oh, sorry, if I'm a contractor QS, sorry, there's a site shutdown, this is gonna cost us this much, this is what I've calculated. The other one will then verify. Who caused the such down? Why did um, the such down happen? Was everybody that you're claiming for actually on site on the day? Please send all the backup to verify that the site shutdown actually cost you that much and I wanna see proof. Um, so the tension points are scope um, changes to the scope or sometimes not seeing something that's this, this, like a certain thing the same way. So sometimes it's even like a clause in the contract. The contractor QS will read it and interpret it one way when the client QS also understands it and reads it inter and interprets it a different way. That could be a tension point between the two and you guys will be arguing, how do you apply this one? How do you, one very common one is the direct fee <laughs> that I've experienced twice or three times now. <laughs> um, there's usually like different understandings of how it's supposed to be applied and when it's applied. And maybe another one that I can think of is the, um, uh extension of time delays when you can claim for it whether the events are separate or you can lump them together that's always like a point of um, tension between the two parties also measurements and the way it's measured usually there is obviously a standard system of measurements and then you get like let's say quantities your quantities are like seven cubes their quantities are like four cubes and then you guys need to then explain how did you get to yours how did you get to yours and that's when you go through each and every line item or your process behind um getting to a certain quantity that's another one that usually like there's a big clash between the two so those are the main tensions that happen so it's like quantities it's variations and then it's also like interpretation of clauses or certain topics where the two parties understand the same thing differently that's where there's usually like a clash and then um common ground that both of them obviously find eventually is when there's fair communication and there's good documentation so whenever there's a tension that arises the two parties will then come together if the other party can answer all the other party's questions like okay you had a question for this here you go here's my answer okay you queried how i measured this here you go here's my method of measurements this is how i did it blah 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 okay you're saying that you guys got um this product delivered where is it okay here's the invoice here's a delivery note here's this and then both of them can then be happy that okay i've asked you my questions and you've verified them or you've answered them by answering them <laughs> so yeah that's that's where they come together so beautifully so if your documentation is important accurate records are important and good communication is very important and that's where both find um, common ground the ideal outcome between the two parties is cost control and project success from both sides at the end of the day both parties want the job to be done both parties one party okay wants not to lose money on the job actually both of them don't want to lose money on the job the other party would hopefully like to make money on the job or not lose money on the job so yeah that's the ideal um, outcome cost control and project success one guards the budget the other defends defends the bottom line and they both make sure that the project stays fair and financially sound nobody wants to sink the other one hopefully but yeah that's the outcome of the two together so at the end of the day a QS and mining whether client or contractor side is about balance and the work that they do is really dependent on what job is being done on the mine so if let's say you think that a mining QS does something different from a building QS, then not, not, it's different in the sense of like what the trade is. So if you are a QS in mining, you're, the difference is that you're working in a mining environment and obviously maybe there's different rules that apply about you being on the mine and how you function, but your role as a QS is pretty much the same everywhere. So in mining, depending on the company that you're in, depending on which side you're part of, contractor or um, client, your job is pretty much still the same. You'll be doing payment certs, either putting them in to get a claim or verifying them from the other side. You'll be working with the same things. Um, another difference would be uh, trades. So depending on 
what you work on even as a client QS a client QS can be managing three different projects one which is civils the other which is steel the other one which is electrical and in that sense you get to be exposed to all these different trades but you're also dealing with QSs in those different trades or different contractor companies who are still just contractor QSs at the end of the day so the only vast difference from a building QS or QS that's not in mining is the location honestly so you're a mining QS because your work is based on the mine but most of the time there isn't that much difference in the stuff that you need to do um yeah so i think that's it i hope i explained it properly yeah so that's pretty much what the role of the qs is in mining whether you're a contractor or you are a client qs and i also think that this question was asked because people probably assume that because you're based on a mine your job is so different like you are doing the production um of whatever the mine is is getting like if they're getting let's say gold you're measuring gold or something i don't know i've never maybe i'm just i haven't been exposed to that side of it but i do not think there's qs's in that sense a lot of the time mines outsource the qsing stuff or qsing work to other companies um and it's usually to manage the construction works around site but when it comes to the mining work itself that's usually done by engineers or quality control people um yeah <laughs> i don't know if you get me but yeah that's the role of a qs in the mine it's pretty much the same wherever you go it's just a different trade different um side whether you're client or contractor and also i think it also depends w which mine you work for which contractor you work for then the system starts being very different in that sense i know that some companies even for the um, contractual stuff they get actual lawyers to manage the contractual stuff and then the qs just as um procurement or tendering and that part of of it so depending on where you work your role will be vastly different Ooh, the sprinklers are on the contractor and the client qs based in a mine are just that it's still a qs it's just that it's based in a mining environment so yeah anyway i hope you found this video useful and i'll see you later in another video please don't forget to like share or subscribe mm -hmm.